Good morning, guys. So what you will find in the military lot is you get a lot of three and four day weekends, which is what I have right now. So we have off Thursday through Sunday. Uh, the reason behind it is because it's kind of like compensation days. So last weekend we worked. Next weekend we're working, and then the whole month of July we'll be gone at Gunnery, so we'll be working as well. So they, like depending on your leadership, they'll try to comp you time for the days that you have worked or that you're going to work in the future. So even though it's my day off, I kept my schedule the same. I woke up at 5 a.m., had some overnight oats, but I tried a new recipe that I made last night. It was one cup of oatmeal, a cup of non-fat Greek yogurt, just plain, 122 grams of pure pumpkin, cinnamon, and stevia. Just mix that up. It was almost like a pumpkin pie, overnight oats. And then I had a Quest bar on the side because yesterday morning I did an interview with Quest with John Glaude for the Transformation Series. So you should see my video on their channel here in the next up couple weeks or so. It's kind of like my transformation from my eating disorder years ago until the point I'm at right now and kind of how I got over it and the obstacles I've, I've been faced with during the recovery phase of that. It turned out really well. We did it at like 4 a.m. and I had to do it before PT because I messed up the time difference that I was trying, trying to calculate when I was setting up the schedule. Um, so I'm about to hit the gym, just took some pre-workout, took flight. I'm gonna be sipping on IntraFlight and creatine. A lot of people ask like, why I take creatine with my intro workout. There's no reason behind it. It's just, it's what's convenient for me. I don't forget to take it and I just mix it together. Creatine you can take anytime during the day. You just take five grams once a day. There's no acute benefit to it. It just saturates the muscle cells and you just need creatine that one time per day and you're good to go. This light is killing me right now. <laughs> So believe it or not, I've been off the diet now for about two weeks. Um, my calories are about 600 more than they were when I was in a deficit, and my weight has not changed at all. I woke up this morning at 200 pounds, which was nearly the leanest I've been uh, during that 11 week cut. Except though, I feel fuller. Uh, I feel that I have more energy levels, but my waist feels thinner. So I, I'm almost leaning out a little bit more, and this is normal, and I kinda wanna touch on this really quick. My belt in this workout felt really loose, and that's how I can really tell. Um, but you will tend to get leaner, and it happens to a lot of people I see that do competitions. After um, you almost like rebound and you start incorporating calories back into your diet and you're around maintenance, a little bit above maintenance. Um, and my biggest tip for you is don't like overreact and try to counterbalance the, the not weight gain and add more and more and more calories in or have excessive cheat days just ride it out and your calories will themselves bring your weight up over time. So I'm still keeping my macros at between 400 and 425 grams of carbs, 250 grams of protein and 80 grams of fat. Now, one thing that I really learned from this cut that I was able to realize is my legs need to come up. So that's kind of what I'm putting a lot of emphasis on these next couple months, especially when we get back from the field, because this field time coming up in in July, that is the last time I'll go to the field with the military. So after that, I can put full emphasis on putting mass and size and strength back on. So the way that I kind of approach weaknesses and how to fix it, um, and, and really the, my attack method is either frequency, volume, or variation. Um, so like the way I'm attacking it is I'm doing higher frequency, so I'm hitting legs more often. I want to get to the point where I'm hitting them almost three times a week. Uh, quads and hamstrings I'm doing higher volume so you can see like in this workout I started off with squats working with between 315 and 335 for five sets and then I went into extensions four sets about 20 reps total and then leg ex or leg press for leg press I did seven sets total of like 12 to 15 reps for some reason lately leg press just feels really good I get a good pump and contraction and it's something I'm going to incorporate while I'm trying to put more mass and size on my legs. Then I did the reverse hack squat, upwards of 20 reps. I'm getting really strong at this movement. And then just calves and finish off with hamstrings. Hamstrings is something I really want to bring up as well in off season and during this time in this bulk. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't understand you. Oh yeah, it's, it's a camera. Oh, Korea, Korea okay? Thank you. All right, guys, you would actually be surprised how many people haven't been off post since being here. Like, I just talked to someone who this is their first time. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I just talked to someone who this is their first time going off post in the last like five months. Um, and I've, I think I've taken advantage of every opportunity to go off post so far. For one, because I saw it as a really good like chance in, in broadening experience for this channel to show you guys a different culture and a different country. And what are the chances I'm going to live in a different country at some point in my life again? Probably very unlikely. Um, but last weekend was the first weekend I went off post and didn't film anything. And all I did was just walk around Jihang with uh, my phone and like headphones and just listen to a podcast for like two hours, just walking around, exploring, and like kind of just people watching and learning about the culture. And it was a really good time. So I got like a 20 minute wait for this train and then we're going to Itaewon today. My number? Oh, oh my, my phone. Oh. Uh, my phone only works for internet. Oh. I, I don't have a number. Oh. No, I don't. My phone number. My phone number doesn't work. Uh, number? Number. I don't know what's going on. So apparently, Bato's Tacos isn't the best taco place in Seoul. So I use TripAdvisor because Yelp just doesn't work here. It's a place called Gusto Taco in. Um, it's by like, the Sangsu train station. It has 523 reviews, 4.5 out of 5. Vatos has 472 reviews, 4 out of 5. So I'm gonna go to Gusto Taco, see if it's better than Vatos. We make our own Mazza, okay? Okay. Alright, so don't take too long. Oh, I appreciate it. Alright, so we made it at Gusto's. Honestly, the owner here is really cool. Uh, he lived in Austin for a little bit, and the atmosphere is very personalized. So, for beer, I got a Indisha IPA. And then I got the pork tacos at first. Now, he recommended I order them in small batches because they make their tortillas fresh daily, and it's like it's fresh maza, and uh, they'll harden up a little bit, I guess. But they look absolutely delicious. The presentation's very good, and like the vibe here is just, it's very personalized. Yeah, that's very good. You can tell, super, super fresh, very homemade. All right, so the next thing I got was the taquitos, which was recommended. So I'm not really sure what's in them. So they're hot as you can see and there's a very good case of dip in there. It's really good. The pork's in there, but the queso is like absolutely on point. So if you happen to be in the Seoul area, check out uh, Gusto's. So to me, going out to eat is like more than just the food, it's an experience. And it's the business owner, it's the employees that make this experience like great. So you can tell at this place, like this guy, this owner, was super proud of his establishment, his product, his service, and he displayed that very well. He came and checked on me. He took the time to, to like describe how the tortillas were made and the process and the time it took. And you can just like see it in someone's eyes. And being a business owner myself, like I'm really appreciative of when people do this. And it kind of just like, it makes me like it puts me in a good mood when I see someone so proud of what they're doing that they want you to know about it and they want to take the time to tell you about it. So luckily, in preparation for wind. This is my most recent pickup. It's a sock. It goes on my mic, so when it's it's windy, it, like, it's supposed to stop the, the wind. I haven't used it yet, but I'm gonna throw it on. So before leaving for Seoul today, I just threw up something on Snapchat asking people to send me questions and I would answer them on the way here just to kill some time. And it gives me a really good opportunity to connect with you guys. And one of the questions that always pops up is, do I drink alcohol, do I get drunk? So here's like my answer to that one. I'm in a coffee shop right now, which is, very quaint and unique but I love quality craft beer like my my love for like hoppy beer first started in Hershey Pennsylvania off of Trogues Brewery and then being in Texas there's like very small micro brews and pubs uh, especially like on Rainy Street they have the one called Craft Pride which I absolutely love and in college I had my fun I went out all the time and let loose I definitely had my fun in college but I'm at a point in my life right now where I don't want to get drunk. And here's my reasoning why. Like, I have to maximize productivity on the weekends. 
because I'm you know, in the army and I'm running my business and the YouTube channel. So if I go out on Friday and Saturday nights, that next morning, I'm not as productive. Whether I want to be or not, I don't have like that mental edge, I'm not sharp, I can't you know, think the way I'd want to, and I just don't make the best decisions sometimes when I'm hungover and in a bad mood. I'm not like, you know, poppy and, and ready to go. So like I had to prioritize, what do I want to do? Like all the other lieutenants are going out on the weekends and, and getting drunk and drinking, which is absolutely fine, I have nothing against that. I love doing it as well at the right time and place. Uh, but right now, my priorities are growing my business, doing my YouTube videos on the weekends because it's hard to during the week, and uh, just doing a lot of work for the business and the gym and getting all that started. So I prioritized being productive rather than going out and getting drunk. So for the time being, I'm kind of staying away from that kind of stuff. Like I said, I have nothing against it and everything in moderation is all right. But I had to make the decision what's going to be best for me right now and best for my future. So that's my answer. So I made it back and there's something I've been wanting to bring up in video lately that I've just like observed is that when I go into the city, even as big as Seoul is and there's so many people and just surrounded by millions of people, like super crowded, especially on like the trains and stuff, um, I'll put my music in and because there's that language barrier and really no one knows what I'm talking about or what I'm saying or really what I'm doing, um, it's like a feeling I've never felt before. I almost feel like I'm alone, like almost invisible and I'm moving around people and they don't see me. It's a very interesting feeling, but it's really cool. Like I almost feel like I'm just like moving about watching other people in a culture exist and that they don't see me. I feel invisible. In case you guys are ever wondering what's in this bag that I carry around when I go in the city, it's pretty much just all my extra camera stuff. The camera that I do use is a Canon 70D with a Sigma 20 millimeter 1.4 art lens and then the Rode VideoMic Pro. So I also just carry in here, this is something I just picked up at Best Buy. Uh, GoPro, I don't use it very often other than like PT stuff. Now this is something I recently picked up. This is another Rode microphone, except it doesn't need a battery. Uh, it's a fraction of the price of the Rode VideoMic Pro. This is the Rode Micro. It, it's smaller, uh, I think it was like $60. I haven't used it much yet, the quality is similar, but the VideoMic Pro is just, it's better in my opinion. Uh, then I just have the Sony RX100 Mark III that I still don't use that one as much either. And then just some extra lenses. This is like a wide angle lens. And this is the prime lens that came with the 70D, which is, the quality isn't nearly as good as the Sigma. And then the Joby Gorillapod. And then one of these wind dampeners for the Rode VideoMic Pro. I've been really hungry lately. Like my appetite is on fire and I'm not gaining any weight. So the meal I'm making right now is just jasmine rice. This is my favorite meal as of right now. It's simple, it's easy, but I just, I'm in love with it. Jasmine rice, it's gotta be jasmine. Coconut oil, between like half a tablespoon and a tablespoon. Chicken, hot sauce, sea salt, so good. So that's gonna be my final meal of the night. That's the video guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. I will talk to you guys in the next one.